thank you very much, uh, everybody, for attending, and welcome to this meeting of the Corporate and Communities Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Um, I'd like to hand over to the Democratic Services Officer, Claire Johnston, uh, to run us through items one through to three. Um, firstly, I'll just read out the housekeeping notice for this meeting. Uh, please note that this meeting of the Corporate and Community Overview and Scrutiny Committee is being recorded by the Council for live broadcast and will be published on the Council website for a minimum of six months. The meeting may also be recorded or streamed for live or subsequent broadcast by members of the public, although ultimate discretion in this matter lies with the Chairman. For those in the room, please note that if the fire alarm sounds, please exit the building by way of the nearest available signed fire exit route and make your way to the assembly points in front of the building. Finally, please um, ensure that background noise is kept to a minimum and that mobile phones and other devices are switched off or turned to a silent setting for the duration of the meeting. Uh, for those in the room, this includes turning off microphones and turning the volume down completely on laptops. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Claire. Would you mind going through items one? two and three of course um item one is apologies um we've received apologies for this meeting from um councillors allen allison andrews and earl um i believe councillor earl and councillor allison are joining online um and we have substitutes for this meeting we have councillor farquhar for councillor allison uh, councillor slade for councillor andrews and councillor moore for councillor earl oh and sorry and councillor kelsey for councillor um allen uh, item three, the declarations of interest. Can I ask members if there are any declarations of interest on items on this agenda? Councillor Moore, thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, for the purposes of transparency, um, I want to declare that I currently lease a beach hut in Paul. Thank you. Very much indeed for that. Um, number four, uh, public issues. Um, we have a number of questions and statements, and um, I'll first of all ask Mr. Lawrence if he'll uh, come to the table and give his question. Thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm Ian Lawrence from Lowther and Milton Homewatch. Question one. Uh, with millions in council assets now in opaque SPVs, the Bournemouth, Christchurch and Paul Council is exposed to corruptibility and non-transparency criticisms. While overview and scrutiny committees are undermined by one party domination, its meetings reduced by 75%, and diluted into two bodies. How can they maintain impartiality, relevance and standards? Question two, if leaders receive substantial directorships or, and fees uh, to limit conflicts of interest and restore confidence and integrity, could they be required uh, in councillors' registers of interest. Finally, three, uh, do committees have sufficient time, resources, authority and independence to restrain any risky and unorthodox ventures to preserve capital receipts for the storms ahead and the needy? Thank you. Thank you for your questions. The answers will be read by the um, Democratic Services Clerk. Thank you, Chair. And so the answer for the first question is as follows. The overview and scrutiny committees are required to be appointed in accordance with the political balance requirements. The allocations determined by Council comply with those requirements. The overview and scrutiny committee arrangements, as established by Council, shall operate in line with the following six principles. To contribute to sound decision making in a timely way by holding decision makers to account as a critical friend. Two, to be a councillor-led and owned function that seeks to continuously improve through self-reflection and development. Three, to enable the voice and concerns of the public to be heard and reflected in the council's decision-making process. Four, to engage in decision-making and policy development at an appropriate time to be able to have influence. 
five, to contribute to and reflect the, the vision and priorities of the council. And six, to be agile and be able to respond to changing and emerging priorities at the right time with flexible working methods. Regardless of political makeup, an effective overview and scrutiny function should be capable of operating to these principles. To further support these principles, the Constitution is explicit that the use of the party whips is incompatible with the role of overview and scrutiny and should not be used. It is accepted that there has been a reduction in the number of meetings of overview and scrutiny, although I would dispute the quoted percentage reduction. However, pre-cabinet scrutiny is only one way for non-executive uh, councillors to examine and comment on matters scheduled to be considered by cabinet. Any councillor may request to attend and speak directly to cabinet on a matter under consideration at one of their meetings. The constitution makes further provision for any of the overview and scrutiny committees to commission work on specific matters, including the establishment of working groups, subcommittees and task and finish groups, convening inquiry days or the appointment of rapporteurs and scrutiny member champions. Um, the, the response to uh, question two. I apologise for interrupting. Could we get clarity on who has written that coming from? Is it coming from the leader or is it coming from an officer? Because normally we would have responses from the leader, but I note he's not actually attending. Sorry, can I ask? Yes, yeah, please. Thank you very much. So, so uh, the practice within this authority is for officers to draft the responses to questions, generally speaking for whichever portfolio holder is responsible to answer those questions, and that is the case in this instance. I, I, I hear that, having been the former leader, I did get the assistance of officers to respond to questions, but I owned the questions and the answers. So is that answer from the monitoring officer or is it from the leader? Because if it's from the lead, if it's not from the leader, I'd actually like to understand what the leader's view is, because he is Ultimately, the one I'm assuming was asked the question. Yes, so would you like to come um, I'm afraid, Councillor Stade, you might need to ask the leader that question because these um, responses were prepared by officers. Whether or not the leader is way behind them or has accepted them, I can't say. Thank you. Would you like to continue? But the response to the second question. The directorship positions held by councillors on council-owned companies are unpaid positions. Uh, the council's um, adopted code of conduct requires the declaration of registrable interest and is divided into two schedules. The first schedule, re uh, referred to as Table 1, requires the disclosure of registrable pecuniary interests as required by regulation under the Localism Act 2011. Table 2 expands on the statutory provisions by requiring all BCP councillors to disclose other registrable interests. The other registrable interests include the disclosure of any unpaid directorships, which for clarity includes those positions held on council owned companies. Both registers are published on the councillor's main web page under the heading public registers. Question three response is uh, the operational principles of the overview and scrutiny committees as referenced in the response to the first question establish the responsibilities and independence of the respective committees and may establish a forward plan to identify priority areas. Pre-cabinet scrutiny is only one tool available to hold decision makers to account. As previously advised, the Constitution provides for any of the overview and scrutiny committees to commission work on specific matters, including the establishment of working groups, subcommittees and task and finish groups, convening inquiry days or the appointment of rapporteurs and scrutiny member champions to focus on priority issues. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. <coughs> um, We've got a question from Mr. Park Engine. Councillor Farquhar. Thank you very much for your indulgence, Chair. May I just ask in advance, are we actually going to receive any answers from a portfolio holder this evening? And if that's going to be the case, is that a, um, a foreshadowing of how ONS will be treated by this administration moving forward? Um, no, we aren't seeing a portfolio holder this evening um, and I will ensure that we have a portfolio holder where I can at the future meeting. May I just ask, were portfolio holders invited to this meeting? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Mohan. Hi, Inga, I beg your pardon. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. It's probably in the same vein, I think, as a way to, as a means of going forward, as Councillor Farquhar has said, to these questions, subsequent questions, I think either it's about who, no matter who is speaking the answer, 
preferably the relevant councillor, but it must be the councillor owning the answer to it. And it may be the leader, it may be the, port, the cabinet member, it may be another lead member, it may even with respect be yourself, um, Chair, as leader of the ONS, perhaps probably question one might have been, it, it would be great to your view on number one, for instance, as chair of the committee, but I think it must absolutely be a councillor owning these questions going forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. And I will say that uh, I would endorse question, uh, the answer to question one. Question. Supplementary of your mission. Thank you. Hi, um, Daniel Parkin from um, I beg your pardon, I'm sorry, I, was, I forgot we changed uh, people. Okay, yes. Yeah, Mr Parkin, you're very welcome, and please ask your question. Hi, everyone, yes. Um, my question was specifically to um, Councillor Meller and um, Councillor Broadhead, so uh, hopefully the response won't be a, a council-driven one, um, but we'll, we'll see from the response that, that I get. So in January, um, after... Bournemouth Christchurch and Pool leaders first unveiled their plan to sell Bournemouth Christchurch and Pool's beach huts. Uh, Councillor Meller said of the financial report, we have done a massively in-depth piece of work with KPMG. Uh, when councillors asked to see this report, they were told it was only in draft form. Then just a few days later, Councillor Broadhead claimed on social media there was no KPMG report. Uh, so can... I don't know who's going to ask this question. Can you confirm exactly? Uh, could I just stop? I think yeah. it's probably easier if we answer one at a time. One at a time? Yeah. Um, and then... And then, uh... then the A and the B? Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Sorry, the response to... Um, can we confirm exactly uh, what was the work provided by K KPMG? Uh, the response is KPMG has supported the work associated with the securitisation of beach hut income. The relevant reports will be made available as part of the pack of information presented alongside the officer report to the Corporate and Community Overview and Scrutiny Committee. So the second question to that then is, can you explain why this report has never been shared with full council or published to date? response is uh, it is important that any reports from KPMG are seen in the context of a formal officer report, be that to either the Corporate and Community Overview and Scrutiny Committee or to Cabinet. I don't know whether I can ask again. Um, so there seems to be conflicting statements from Councillor Meller and Councillor Broadhead as to whether there is a KPMG report. So did you confirm that, that there is or, or there isn't? Monitoring officer. Yeah, I just felt I should advise these, these questions are limited to 100 words each and I don't feel it's appropriate in the procedure for questioners to go outside with supplementaries and extra. Thank you. Um, the answer that I can provide to that is that KPMG has supported the work associated with the securitisation of beach hut income. That's the answer. That's the answer. Councillor Slay. Yes, Chair. Um, I made a formal request last week through the monitoring officer of the chief executive for the publication of the report, which I understand is available. And just to to be fair to the answer that our democratic services officer gave, she did confirm that the paper will be made available. Um, my understanding is we will be getting a copy of the KPMG report. Therefore, there must be a KPMG report. Um, obviously, we don't yet know what that looks like. I have been asked for my forbearance uh, in uh, waiting until all of the associated papers that I've also requested are available so that we can, in the words of a democratic services officer, have the full context. Um, I have assured the chief executive in my specific request that I am content that I would rather have all of the papers as soon as possible rather than having part of the paper tonight, if that's helpful. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Slade, and I can endorse that also. Thank you. 
Councillor Iingo, you wanted to come in. Please continue. Thank you, Councillor Slade. Um, second question. Um, it appears the beach huts appear to be sold um, or plans to be sold for a figure between 50 to 54 million pound, yet produce a massive 10 percent income yield. What yield are you expecting by reinvesting this money and from what? Can you please also confirm which company valued these beach huts and on what basis as the valuation appears very low and did more than one company uh, were they were, was more than one company used to value these assets? Thank you. The answer is. The, the full details of any potential disposal um, will be set out as part of the formal report and it will include details of the basis of the evaluation and any amounts. Um, the council has been supported in the valuation exercise by Vale Williams. Vale Williams. Thank you. Your questions. And we now have public statements. Um, Mr. McKinstry, I understand you've got a statement you'd like to make. I am. Yeah. That's all right. I probably am too. Uh, if you turn your microphone on, it would help. That's all right. right. So, this scheme to transfer BCP's beach huts to a separate entity is in my view illegal. It's being attempted under flexible use of capital receipts regulations, which were designed to encourage councils to sell surplus assets, not put viable ones to innovative use. Nor would the transfer constitute a disposal as required by Section 9 of the Local Government Act 2003. Far from being disposed of, the assets are being shuffled out of reach for 20 years. The Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities has been reflecting on BCP's proposals. I hope their opinion matches mine and that any further creative transactions involving our three towns assets are henceforth strongly discouraged. Thank you very much indeed for your statement. Um, we've had a statement from Mr. Tallamy. Thank you. Mr. Tallamy has asked uh, for his statement to be read out on his behalf. My statement is based on my views as a bewildered BCP resident. Bewildered by the mixed messages presented by the leaders and the lack of openness and transparency shown to councillors and residents. Is there a KPMG report or not? Has the government approved the legitimacy and fiscal validity of the Beach Hut scheme? If not, what are the ongoing discussions with government ministers? Surely the legality should have been finalised before the scheme was announced rather than now, rather than how it has been, causing concerns and often heated debates across the BCP conurbation. I'd like to thank Mr Tallamy for his question, sorry, his statement. And there's uh, another statement from uh, Mr Chapman Law. I'll also be reading this one out on his behalf. I'd like to see the advice the leader supposedly received from KPMG regarding the Beach Hut scheme. On the 9th of February, Councillor Howell asked to see this advice and the leader said the report would come to full council. The report or draft report, as it was then described, was not, however, produced at council on the 22nd of February and still hasn't been produced five months later, not even for this scrutiny meeting. The leader continually criticises the Unity Alliance for their non-existent fire sale. At least fire sales are legal, whereas with this beach hut scheme, the legality is still unclear. Thank you for your question, Mr Chapman Manuel. And we've got a statement uh, from Ms McDade. The, uh, I've got two statements from uh, Ms McDade. The first is, as a beach hut owner, I have no correspondence from the council regarding this. I find this both surprising and concerning, given the fact that we were emailed about set up of a beach hub bar, I'd have thought inviting us to comment on this issue was at least as important. You outline beach hut associations as a key stakeholder. It should be beach hut owners and users with the beach hut associations as one way of engaging with us. It shouldn't be your only method, especially when membership has a cost attached. Uh, the second statement reads, 
Despite taking it upon myself to try and find out about this and the proposed impact, it's extremely difficult to navig navigate the documentation to make comment. The agenda still lists the report to follow. As a mother of two boys under 11 living in a small two bedroom flat and working locally, our beach hut is our outdoor space and we are therefore very keen to protect it and have the opportunity to comment properly on any proposed changes. Thank you. And I'd like to thank uh, Ms McDade for her two statements. And um, that brings us to item five. Yes. Chairman, bearing in mind that there is no agenda for the rest of this meeting, I think that we should now be adjourning this meeting. There is no point in us sitting here with we don't have an agenda to listen to. Uh, what I would like to second the proposal. Uh, on that. Uh, Councillor Sorry. Sorry, Chair. Uh, surely we should be discussing that before we take a vote on it. We wouldn't normally go straight to a vote on something without discussing whether it was appropriate. Okay. Would you like me to start? Yes, please do. Okay. Uh, I completely understand that the uh, administration has decided to take a different approach. I'm disgusted that they haven't bothered to turn up to this meeting tonight. I'm grateful to the officers that have come uh, to, to listen to our concerns. I do think we should be uh, discussing where we've got to so far, despite not having a paper. Uh, I have particular issues around things like, as Ms McDade said, uh, the intention was that a paper was being presented to a meeting tonight. And it is only because the administration have changed direction to what appears to be a direct loan from government um, that, that they paused it. There was always a promise that our beach hut tenants would be consulted. That consultation must surely have been planned and now cancelled. So I'd like to know where the evidence is for that consultation. When was it going to happen? How was it going to happen? None of that, that that's still valid because, you know, the beach heart owners were promised that in February. I'm very happy to, to, that the papers are going to be seen at a, a future meeting. I would like some assurance from you as chair uh, that you are content to convene another special meeting, bearing in mind there is not a scrutiny meeting of this board uh, committee due before the next council. So I'd like a, a commitment on that. Um, and I would also like to put forward a, um, a recommendation, but I'm happy to listen to the debate before before so doing, uh, because I recognise your the motion we're discussing is whether to not discuss. Uh, I believe we should be given a platform to share the views of our of our residents for officers and members to hear our concerns and to take those things into consideration in the preparation of whatever papers we eventually get. Thank you, Councillor Slade. Um, first of all, I'd like to say, yes, there will be another meeting. There are, you've raised a number of points which I'm not in position to answer. Um, the points are well made and I will listen to other Thank you, Chair. This, this question is for you, actually. Uh, seen as the reports in the echo that there is a new. I wonder uh, if the meeting uh, of this report or the meeting was proposed to be cancelled. Uh, I understand your suggestion because the report was not to become not going to be. Uh, was it going to be delayed? Or was it going to um, not be issued at all? Or were you in the? Or was that request made in the knowledge that you were aware that there was a change, complete change in direction? So was it because the report wasn't available, or was it because it? Um, there was no report. Uh, no reason to have a meeting. Chairman, could you use your microphone so we can actually? Hear? I, I am actually. Yeah, we, we it's my voice. Right um, there, there was um, no report, so it didn't seem. Um, but with hindsight, we've got a meeting, so.
clearly there was an anticipation that the, the report was around, but it was going to be agenda for this meeting clearly um, brought around and suddenly there was no report or what it would have been you obviously were informed that there was no report or were you informed that actually it was going to be I was actually told that the report would be delayed uh, there is a report apparently I haven't seen it um, and I was told it was incomplete and no time so, but things move on. Yes, Councillor Moore. You? Oh no, Councillor Ainger. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Thank. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Probably reflecting on previous speakers here. Um. Two things about this, I think, are both, are both concerning. One is the proposal itself. The other thing is about our arrangements for overview and scrutiny here in handling this. On the proposal itself, um, I echo what Councillor Bartlett is saying, which is that. Um, the very fact that this meeting was set up indicates that a report was near completion and there was something we won't know i suppose but there was something there but something also is you know substantially big enough incomplete still for the report not to have been issued and i think there's something even out of respect for this committee and other councillors where we need to know more about what the status is with this proposal for committee members and also for residents associations and for residents who are looking in very concerned, which is, I can only speak in general terms here, but there's something I don't know, we don't know about the status of whether this proposal is a goer or not, fundamentally. And because we've, we've been in, well, I've seen overview and scrutinies before where the report is almost done, but it's good enough to come to scrutiny and have 90% of the discussion. And it looks like it's not even that with this proposal. Uh, the fact that we don't have the report and we don't know when we're going to have the report either. It's a very, um, what's the right word? It seems precarious, the status of the proposal would be my guess. I, I think, That's number one. Okay. But shall I can, do both? Well, can Jane? I just stop Please you do, yeah. that? Thank you. Um, there is a report on its way. Um, I'm sorry to ask the officers to join in, but um, Chris, are you able to help us on this? Chris Saunders. In terms of what and when? In terms of the status of the report? There is a report drafted, finally complete, but there is a report drafted. Okay, thanks. Yes, monitoring officer. The last discussion I had indicated that um, there might be a proposal this evening for the meeting to be adjourned to the 2nd of September. That's correct. I'm not sure if that's yeah. correct. It is. And I, I was actually to give a time scale yeah. for when the report I was actually going to finish with that, but as Councillor Slade did ask the question, second September is, is when we're going to look at it again. So I can go you want second question, then Councillor Moore. It, if I make it continue, thank you. Yeah. So that's what the proposal. So that suggests that the proposal is something near completion whereby for it to come on the 2nd of September, it will be ready in what is about within four weeks or so to meet the deadline for being issued for yeah. the 2nd of September meeting. Yeah, regrettably, it's nearly September, so yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Weeks. That covers the first thing. The second thing is about the communications around this meeting and so on. Um, I ended up, and please, it gives me no pleasure to say this, I ended up calling the Daily Echo um, to thank them today, uh, Mr Lewis, and uh, with the greatest respect to Mr. Lewis, I shouldn't be calling him to find out what is happening um, with the status of any report or what is likely to be happening, um, because he seems to know more than I did. Um, but um, going forward, as to whether this meeting was taking place or not, and I appreciate the chair, you did give a reply to me a few days ago on this, and as to whether the meeting's happening, what's coming to the meeting, the agenda at the meeting, and not least, out of respect for residents and residents associations coming to this meeting and giving up their time for this meeting. I think there's something about treating people with contempt, our tax paying residents around all of this. And there's something that could be significantly improved about the way this procedure is operating, notwithstanding the difficulty of the proposal. So there's two things here that really, really need to be improved. My final thing was to ask about a plan going forward. We ought to agree that before we agree to adjourn. I think if 2nd of September is the next meeting, fine. If there's any other bits of that plan that need to be worked out, let's do it here, please. Thank you. 
Um, first, first of all, um, I hope I haven't treated any members of the public with contempt. I certainly wouldn't have that intention. Um, I'm very grateful that they've taken the trouble to be here and to write in and give statements. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is I'm quite happy to confirm the 2nd of September, um, if, if everybody's happy with that. Um, I think at that point, if... oh, I beg your pardon, I'm sorry. Right, Councillor Moore. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, no, I'm not criticising the way that you've behaved this evening, but I do agree with everything my colleague said um, about the communications regarding this meeting, because there was an awful lot of residents, especially the beach hut owners and, and people who rent them, that have been clearly really, really worried about all this. I mean, the plans have, have clearly changed since everyone became aware of them, but there hasn't been any proper communication. And can I just ask for clarity about the report? So you say that there is a report that's been drafted. Presumably, um, if the a meeting can actually take place on the 2nd of September, then we will get a report. And can we also um, uh, be advised whether or not we're going to get the report from KPMG um, any LGA advice, any SIPFA advice, whatever is available, can we please have it so that we can see it in advance and can also the uh, residents um, have proper communication, especially to the beach owners and, and uh, uh, renters, so that everybody knows what is happening. If, if, if this isn't going to happen anymore and it's all been changed, they need to know because they are really, really worried at the moment. Thank you. Very much indeed. Thank you very much, Chair. Just coming back to um, the, the the proposal that's uh, been put on and seconded. Um, it's it's disappointing to hear that as soon as the uh, the uh, we moved on to business five. Um, the reason it's disappointing um, to hear that is because to reflect our speakers here tonight is that I'm hearing as a councillor and, a, and, a, and a, as a group leader from the ECHO policy and direction from this administration. I'm also hearing from the ECHO what's actually happening at this committee. What, when is it happening? Is it not happening? And so on and so forth. I sympathise fully with Councillor Iyengar that no councillor and no member should be treated in such a way that they have to pick up the phone to the local press to understand whether or not their services are going to be required to scrutinise the administration. It was said at the start in answer to one of the questions, um, principle number three, I believe, that, the, that these meetings are here as an opportunity for the voice of public concerns to be heard. The nature of how this meeting has come about is actually, to me, flies in the face of the reason we have overview and scrutiny committees and why it is that the principles of scrutiny are there. The reason I say that is because we've had no attendance from the leadership. We've had no attendance from any member of the administration. And that is disrespectful to not just this committee, but also the members of the public that have a right in law to actually raise public concerns. So to me, that is the least strong word I can use is disrespectful. And it is quite frankly, ducking accountability, which is the whole purpose of scrutiny. And accountability is one of the Nolan principles that all councillors and public figures live by accountability. You have to lay yourself open to understand the decisions and the direction and how you came about those decisions is laid out. And we do that by scrutiny. The last thing which I'd suggest is that to reinforce that, we heard a statement tonight and I'll read the section out which, which struck me for a concerned resident that has the right have their concerns heard. As a mother of two boys under 11, living in a small two bedroom flat and working locally, our beach hut is our outdoor space. 
It is our outdoor space. We are therefore very keen to protect it and have the opportunity to comment properly on any proposed changes. The suggestion that has been put about that this meeting be cancelled or it be um, made in, in quarant so that effectively it is cancelled is disgusting. Disgusting and it's despicable. And the reason it's despite, despite, disgusting and despicable because there is a mother of two boys who, whose outdoor space is a beach hut. And this meeting was convened specifically to talk about the plans to actually move those beach huts into an SPV and affect directly this resident. And to propose that this meeting would be cancelled so that public issues would not be heard, I'm, I'm disgusted. Okay. So I would not be supporting the proposal that, that we don't have a debate to why it is that this committee has been treated in this way and how we got to this moment in time. The reports, yes, I've heard them to come. Yes, I've heard the, the direction. Yes, I've heard about ministers have to make a decision for the local government, for local government, for the administration here. We're relying on money from here, we're relying on money from there. I've heard that. But proposal and the way that this board has been, sorry, this committee has been treated, I'm disgusted. And I am standing in for a member which my group, the Labour group, fought hard to have a seat on this board. And there are other political groupings in this administration that, sorry, in this uh, council that have been denied a seat on this scrutiny. So thank you very much, Jim. Thank you. Um, is there anybody else in the room? Right, Councillor Burke. Thank you. I'll keep this, I'll keep this very brief, Chair. Um, we've seen the reports that there's a complete change in direction, effectively, uh, which presumably would have resulted in the report being withdrawn, and I understand why it would have done. Uh, but uh, we have no confirmation of that, or we only have a report in the echo. Now, we do have senior uh, officers here that are working alongside the leader and other people in this matter. I think it would be entirely appropriate to ask if we can have any information regarding that change in direction. Is it a figment of somebody's imagination on the editorial staff of the Echo, or is it fact? Because if it's fact, then we don't need to worry our residents about the effect on beach huts too much any longer, do we? Because it's a completely different way of funding transformation. So can we please ask the officers if they could give a view on that. Uh, we do have one of the uh, directors um, of the, uh, the, the, I'm sorry, I, I'm not sure of the uh, title, but uh, we, we do have directors here and we have the monitoring officer. And indeed we have our uh, chief uh, financial officer here, but I'm sure we'll be well abreast of the developments that have been held in, um, in with the minister. Well, I hope he is anyway. Um, maybe, maybe if you'd like to comment on that. Well, Thank I, you. I'd like to comment. I don't see that we can rely on the Bourne of Echo for information. Doing. Um, the, well, well, the Bournemouth Echo has been mentioned a number of times today. With, with, respect, with respect, Chair, there was a tweet from the uh, portfolio holder for uh, regeneration on Sunday, which actually let the cat out of the bag about a change in policy. So I think that that is it, it, it tantamount to giving us the answer. I do need some confirmation from officers if they're able to give it. Monetary officer, are we in a position to say anything? Chairman, from my understanding, and I uh, have been party to some conversations, obviously amongst my seniors here, but um, I understand that there has been communication between the leader and the minister in the Department for Leveling Up, which the leader has already made public and that the leader is hoping to have some more firm conversations with, you know, as a result of what's happening in central government, perhaps some of those conversations have been a little delayed, and the leader is hoping to have more certain conversations and more clarity uh, with the newly appointed minister before he comes with a full set of proposals to cabinet, and that those proposals will then be uh, scrutinised by this committee beforehand. So I suppose 
as officers, we would think scrutiny wise, we would hope that that scrutiny meeting would be set before the date for next cabinet, which is the 7th of September. Which is why we actually picked the 2nd of September. So I'm not able to say anything about a change of policy direction, no, although it's central so. government that may be on the cards. Yeah. I'm clearly not a member of the cabinet, so I can't talk about policy either. So um, are we finished in the room because I've gone like a castle slave? I'm happy if you'd like to come to the two online because I have a recommendation. So if you would like to take them first and come back to my recommendation, I would be content. Um, you go first, Councillor Slade. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Um, given that the paper and the Council's recommendations will be required to be published at least seven days before the meeting on the 2nd, uh, which takes us to less than 28 days from now. Given that we do not have a prime minister, uh, we have no idea whether the existing minister will be in post by the date of the BCP cabinet meeting. I find it almost incredible uh, that we are uh, confident that everything which is being suggested is signed off during the summer recess. Um, it may do, but I'm not confident. Given that fact and the fact that this could slip further, I would like to put a proposal that we ask the leader, who is also the portfolio holder for finance, to prepare an emergency budget based upon the fact that this could see our whole budget come tumbling down. And therefore, it would be imprudent for us to wait another six or eight weeks before we know what is going to happen. So I would like to formally propose that we request the leader begin the preparations for an emergency in your budget. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Moore, you, you second. Um, do a show of hands. Ms. Faber. Yeah, we have, we we actually do have a we actually do have a motion on the table. I'm I'm aware that you have a motion on the table, but um, that's why I offered to yeah, hold I, that until later. I think the monitoring officers. Right. So th thank thank you for that. We'll move move on and then come back to yeah. you. I didn't know what you were going to propose. So, uh, Councillor Cox, I think you're uh, sorry. Can I just check? Nobody else in the room wants to. Speak, Councillor Cox. Floor is yours. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Um, it, it, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm not muted. No, we can't hear you. I'm afraid. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Councillor, come line from where I am, but it doesn't appear they can hear us in the uh, at the surface hub. Ah. I think their volume might be turned down. Whose volume? Their volume at their speaker. I'm just about to message Susan Zeiss. OK. We're just going to check the technicalities at this end. Sorry, gentlemen. It's muted at the bottom. I've uh, just let you know, Councillor Cox, I've told Susan Zeiss that, that they can't hear us, but that we can hear you online. So I've asked her that she turns the volume up at their end. OK, thank you. Uh, we're, we're going to put the speaker on uh, one of the computers here so that uh, you can both be heard. So, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. yes. OK, thank you. Uh, and thank you, uh, Councillor Williams, for letting me speak. Um, uh, it is very disappointing uh, that Councillor Kelsey uh, has tried straight off to close down the debate. 
um, and it is reflective, unfortunately, of the uh, of this administration, which is trying to do this throughout. Um, the 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 uh, securitisation of the beach huts is is fundamental to the budget that we you know that is running the council at the moment, uh, and this sort of risky and and uh, unorthodox uh, approach, you know, is 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 you know many of us find appalling, and many residents find appalling, and the fact that. Um, the 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 leader and his deputy have, have gone cap in hand to the government uh, to try and persuade them to 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 approve this uh, just shows the desperate measures that are, are being taken um, and that, you know if, as far as we can you know as far as we can see um, they haven't approved it you know they've turned around and said it's 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 too risky and we're not having it and so they appear they appear according to to Twitter um, they appear to have uh, come up with an alternative. Uh, which involve us borrowing millions of pounds, um, more debt for for BCP. Unfortunately, um, you know it's um, it's it's very disappointing. And 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 in terms of questions, I'd like to know: is is this proposal to securitise budget is it being deferred or is it being scrapped? Because it would appear that it might be being scrapped, uh, probably being scrapped because it's illegal. Um, and uh, and and that's and we haven't been told that yet. We seem to be being fobbed off by saying it's. Oh, we'll talk about it later. We'll give you the reports later. But uh, you know, actually, it's probably being scrapped, isn't it? Really, in reality. And I'd like to know that. And and also, I'd like to know what are the what are the costs involved uh, in in this in this whole project? What are the direct costs? How much the, the all these reports um, cost the council from KPMG through to the LGA to to whoever? Uh, and and. And what is the officer time that's been spent on this? Because it, as far as I can see, it's, it's vast. And I, that's one question I feel that we, we as councillors should demand answers to. So that, those are the points I wanted to make. Yeah. Sir? You're, you're answering quest, asking questions that I'm not sure we can answer this evening, but I, I do take that on board. However, I will say, please don't believe everything you read on Twitter. Well, it was from the deputy, uh, the deputy leader of the council, actually. So, you know, I, I, I would approve of your, your, your sentiment entirely <laughs> from that particular source. Councillor Allison. Thank you, Chair. Yes, yeah, so and my questions were pretty much in line with what Councillor Cox has just said. I think it's important that we remember that this beach up plan you know, has many, many issues, but the most fundamental issue of all is the fact that our entire budget this year is underpinned by this SPV working. And actually, this deferral is actually what appears to me to be actually this project is getting scrapped because it's not supported by uh, council officers. It's not supported by the government. And the report shows that, which is why we've not seen it so far. Um, is there any emergency plan or emergency budget? Because if this SPV doesn't work, we're looking at quite a substantial hole in this year's budget. And it doesn't appear to me that there's anybody here in the room to defend those plans or to come up with any alternative proposals for how we're going to fill that gap. Which is why I wanted to, sorry, Councillor Kelsey wanted to defer. Um, anybody else? Councillor Adley. Oh, I didn't see him online. Councillor Hadley, you wanted to speak. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I, I, I guess. I, I mean, I, again, I'm, I'm really disappointed that uh, um, the attempts to close the discussion down uh, um, immediately. Um, but also, as, as previous speakers have said, there, there's, there's this, this, um, this suggestion that the loan will still be taken out, but it will be funded via the public sector um, borrowing. Uh, um, but that's still a loan that needs to be repaid. And I suppose the question that we need answers to, and 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 part of it is about the expectation for the public, is that still going to be raised through um, enormous hikes in the beach hut fees? So from the beach hut tenants, is it going to be from from general residents of the, the council? In which case, anyone living in BCP ought to be worried about that. Um, the count, the uh, leader has made a big fuss about uh, um, zero tax increase, ignoring the social care precept uh, increase. Uh, and uh, and and uh, we need um, we need firstly uh, time to assimilate things like the KPMG report. If it's the second of September before the 9th of September meeting, that's no time uh, at all to actually uh, um, for 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 cabinet to take any notice of what overseeing scrutiny uh, um, comes up with in terms of recommendations. 
um, but also uh, um, we, we 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 need to understand the uh, um, the impacts of this in terms of what the scheme looks like. If it's not about the big shirts, then it's about a a straight loan. And if that's about a straight loan, then uh, um, the big plan in terms of what that's actually going to achieve and what costs we're putting on future taxpayers uh, um, within the BCP area uh, um, in order to service a loan. Because um, in the budget update we had at the last full council there was maintenance of roads um, came forward as something that was going to be capitalised. So for the future, we'll be paying for potholes filled in, in this financial year. That's pretty disgusting in terms of, of uh, um, a manoeuvre to put all the costs into the future. Well, well, yes, but that's 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 the issue, isn't it? Is is this has moved from from being about the beach huts to being we need a loan to prop up the budget, and we need to understand the scope of that. The public needs to understand the scope of that, not uh, um, just on the second of September, but uh, you know imminently. And we also potentially, and that should be for the section one five one officer, need to consider uh, um, whether we should be putting a stop to anything any un unnecessary expenditure. Because if there's a fifty million pound hole in this year's budget um, before we uh, jump to, uh, um, to 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 another solution, uh, we need to be clear that we are not continuing to build a bigger hole. Thank you. Monitoring officer, can you advise me where we go from here? Chairman, there's a motion on the table by uh, Councillor Kelsey and seconded. So I think you need to take the vote on that motion now. Um, Councillor Kelsey's made a motion. All those in favour? Against? Madam Chair, may I ask for my vote to be recorded for the purposes yeah. of the minutes? Um, well, thank you. We, we've had a motion that's been great, so that brings the meeting to a close. So just for the public's clarity, that means that we can't actually uh, even talk to the other motion because you've closed the meeting. Is that correct? You did have a choice. You voted for the motion to close the meeting. That was your absolute choice. <laughs> <laughs>